Hello, everyone. We're going to finish up uh, the last three skills of this unit, which is substitution with negative numbers. Then we'll talk about ordering negative number expressions. And lastly, we'll finish up with one step equations with addition and subtraction. So let's go to substitution with negative numbers. We'll do a few examples from here. It says evaluate negative 2 minus x plus negative 9 where x equals 4. So just like the word substitution means, I'm just going to substitute 4 in where x is. So let's rewrite our problem. Negative 2 minus 4 plus negative 9. And now I'm just going to go left to right to solve it. So we have to follow our integer rules. I'm going to do keep change change. So that becomes negative 2 plus negative 4, which is negative 6. And then I'm going to bring down my plus negative 9, same sign, so we add and keep, which means our final answer here is going to be negative 15. Let's try another one. Here we have evaluate negative 1 minus negative z, where z equals negative 2. Now notice this says negative z. So if z equals negative 2, then negative z is just going to be the opposite, which is a positive 2. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 minus, and then in parentheses I'm going to put 2. Again, we have subtraction, so we're going to do keep change change. And that's going to leave me with a final answer of negative 3. Consider the following number line. Evaluate w, evaluate w minus x. Well, notice that this is negative 4, which means that each tick mark represents two units. So that would make this one negative 2, and that would make w a 4. So I'm just going to plug that in. w minus x would be 4 minus negative 2. Keep change change. It becomes 4 plus 2, which gives us 6 as our answer. And here, evaluate r minus negative q. Well, you can see that q is 6, so that means negative q is going to be negative 6. I can see that r, each tick mark represents 3 units, so r is negative 3. So now we're just going to plug in r minus negative q. That's negative 3 minus negative 6. Subtraction, so we have to keep change, change. And then different signs, so we subtract, and I have more positives than negatives, which leaves us with an answer of 3. Okay, here it says one, evaluate 1 plus negative 2 thirds minus negative m, where m equals 9 over 2. Well, if m equals 9 over 2, that means negative m is going to be negative 9 over 2. So here we, we're doing the same thing, except now we've got fractions that we're dealing with. So we're going to go 1 plus, I'm just going to rewrite it, and then minus negative 9 over 2. So let's go left to right, 1 plus negative 2 thirds. Well, they're different signs, so we subtract. So I'm just going to do 1 over 1. I'm going to write my whole number as a fraction, plus negative 2 thirds. My common denominator would be 3. So that's going to become 3 thirds, because to get from 1 to 3, we're multiplying through by 3. So 3 thirds plus negative 2 thirds is going to leave me with a positive 1 third. And then 1 third minus negative 9 over 2, keep change change, becomes plus positive 9 over 2. My common denominator here would be 6. 3 times 2 gets me to 6. What we do on the bottom, we do to the top. And here I'm multiplying by 3. And that's going to leave me with my final answer. Same sign, so we add and keep. So that's going to leave me with 29 over 6, which is our final answer. Okay, moving along to ordering negative number expressions. This skill can be a little bit tricky, so the best thing that I can suggest is to try to estimate, especially for an example like this one here where it's not exact where your variable is on the number line, but we could probably do a good job of estimating. So I can see that B is not quite halfway through. 
So I'm going to write this as negative 0 0.4. And that's what we're going to use to estimate for where B is. And A is not quite at positive 1, but I would say that it's pretty darn close. So let's write that as 0 0.9. There's no need to get into the hundredths. I would try to keep it at the tenths just to make it a little bit easier. So here on the left-hand side, we've got A plus B. This drop-down is going to be less than, greater than, or equal to. And then on the right-hand side, we have A minus B. So let's evaluate for both sides. So A plus B would be negative 0 0.4 plus 0 0.9. Let's put a space there. And then A minus B. Oops, hold on. I mixed my numbers up. Let's erase this and go back. So A would be... 0 0.9 plus negative 0 0.4. And then over here, we've got A minus B, so that would be 0 0.9 minus negative 0 0.4. Well, here we have different signs, so I would subtract, and that would leave me with a positive 0 0.5. And over here, we can do keep change change which means that we're adding them. So that would leave me with a positive 1.3. So clearly the symbol would be the right-hand side is greater than. So you would have 0 0.5 or A plus B is less than A minus B. Let's try this next one. It's asking you, this one is where you're going to have to drag them. Which one is the least value? Which one is the greatest value? And which one will be closest to zero. So again, we're going to estimate where R and S are on the number line. Notice that your tick marks are going in twos. So that would mean that negative one would be somewhere around here. So let's say that R is negative 1.6. And let's estimate if three were right here, let's make S 2.5. So we've got negative S, which would be negative 2.5. And then we've got S plus R, which would be 2.5 plus negative 1.6. Those are different signs. So we're going to subtract those. Oops, let me use a different color. 2.5 minus 1.6 is going to leave me with 0 0.9. I have more positives than negatives. And then just S, which is 2.5. So these are the numbers that we're dealing with. So my least value is clearly going to be my negative. So that would go to that one. My greatest value would be 2.5. So that would go down to that one. And my closest to zero would be S plus R. Let's try another one. Again, we need, this one's a little bit easier to estimate. We can see clearly that A is at negative 1, and B is clearly at negative 0 0.5. So we've got A, which that's just going to be negative 1. Then we've got A minus 0 0.5, so let's plug that in. Negative 1 minus 0 0.5. Keep change, change. That's going to leave me with a negative 1.5. And then B minus A would be negative 0 0.5 minus negative 1. Keep change, change. Different signs, so we subtract. So that's going to leave me with a positive 0 0.5. So we've got 0 0.5, negative 1.5, and negative 1. We're going from least to greatest. So clearly the middle one is your smallest. So that means that that would go first. Next would be A. And your greatest one would be this one. Order the following expressions by their values from least to greatest. So as we can see, each tick mark represents one unit. So A is at negative 1, B is at 2, and C is at 3. So the first one is just going to be 2. A plus negative C would be negative 1 plus negative C would be a negative 3, which equals negative 4. And then here we've got C minus negative B. Well, C is 3 minus negative B would be negative 2. Since B is 2, negative B would be negative 2. Keep change, change, and that's going to give me a 
positive five. So going from least to greatest, my first one would be here, then B, and then my greatest would be this last one. Okay, let's finish up the last skill, which is one step equations with addition and subtraction. I do have um, a video here, a brief video on using modeling tiles, uh, algebra tiles to model equations. Uh, if you are having trouble with any of these problems, that might be a good idea for you to go back and watch. Okay, so the first thing we should talk about is when you are solving an equation with a variable, the first thing that you want to do is you want to isolate the variable. And in order to do that, you have to use the inverse operation to get the variable by itself. So here we're just going to be doing basic one-step equations with addition and subtraction. So your inverse operation is either going to be addition or subtraction, depending on the, what the problem is. And then your last step, you should always plug your number back in to make sure that um, it works to check your answer. So let's try an example. I'm just going to rewrite the problem here to give myself a little bit of room to work. So we're trying to figure out what our variable n is. Now, the whole goal is to isolate my variable, which means I want to try to get n by itself. But my problem is, is I've got this positive 22 here. Well, since it's a positive 22, in order for me to get rid of it, I would subtract 22. 22 minus 22 is 0, so it cancels out. And whatever we do on one side of our equal sign, we have to do to the other. So now I've got n by itself. I've isolated my variable, but I still need to solve this problem over here on the right, which is basically negative 12 minus 22. Keep change, change. Same sign, so we add and keep. 22 plus 12 is 34, and we're going to keep our negative. So our answer here would be n equals negative 34. Now that second step says plug your answer in to see if it works. So in red, let's check it. 22 plus negative 34 should equal negative 12. Well, different signs, so we subtract. 34 minus 22 is 12, and we have more negatives than positives, leaving us with negative 12. So I just checked it, and my answer worked. <clears throat> Let's try the next one. I'm, again, I'm just going to rewrite my problem. Negative 6 equals negative 11 plus j. So we're trying to get j by itself, but I've got this negative 11 here. Since it's a negative 11, I want to do the opposite, which is to add 11. That's what's going to cancel out because those are opposites or additive inverses. What we do on one side of our equal sign, we have to do to the other. So now j is by itself, and I just need to solve this last step, negative 6 plus 11, different sign, so we subtract, and that's going to leave me with a positive 5. Let's plug it in to check it. Is negative 11 plus 5 going to give me a negative 6? Yes, it is. Different sign, so we subtract. Let's try another one. Okay, so we've got y. Notice the double negative here, minus negative 10. I'm going to change that right away to keep change change. That becomes y plus 10 equals negative 41. And now to get y by itself, since this is adding 10, I want to do the opposite, which is subtracting 10. And that's going to leave me with y equals, let's down here do negative 41 minus 10. It means we're doing keep change change, and that's going to leave me with a negative 51 as my answer. Again, we want to go back in and plug that in to make sure it works. So let's try it. Negative 51 minus negative 10 becomes plus 10. And that's going to leave me with a negative 41. Let's try one last one together. We just rewrite it. We've got negative 0 0.2 equals s plus and then negative 0 0.8. Since this is a negative 0 0.8, to get my s by itself, I'm going to add 0 0.8. That's going to cancel out. What we do on one side of our equation, we have to do to the other. So that's going to leave me with s by itself. And then here I've got negative 0 0.2 plus 0 0.8. Different signs, so we subtract. And I have more positives than negatives. 
0 0.8 minus 0 0.2 is going to leave me with a 0 0.6. Let me actually get rid of this equal sign right there. And I've got more positives than negatives. So S is going to equal 0 0.6. Let's plug it in just to make sure. So we've got 0 0.6 plus a negative 0 0.8 different signs so we subtract and I have more negatives than positives leaving me with negative 0.2 so that one worked okay so that does it for the first unit on negative numbers addition and subtraction if you uh, want to do the correlating problems in your note-taking packets that's pages 25 through 30 and again you can always watch the videos on Khan Academy if you would like to see some additional examples have a great day everyone